Alright guys, welcome to Camp Good News. Even though we can't meet in person, we can still meet online and have some fun. And I am Marissa, and if you've been to Camp Good News today before, you know that we start chapel off by praying. So I am going to pray today. So everyone can clap up. Dear God, thank you for today, and I thank you for letting us be able to be here today. And I pray that we can just have a fun time, even though we're online, and that we can just learn some more stuff about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, one of the things we have here at Camp Good News is called a word up. Now, that's just kind of like a theme for today. And our word up for today is God's way is the only way. Which this means that God, he sent his son Jesus down to earth to die on the cross for our sins. And sin is anything you think say or do that doesn't please God. So the wrong things we do. So God sent Jesus and Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins. And that's the only way we can have our sins forgiven. So God's way is the only way. All right. So just as Marissa was talking about God's way being the only way to get to heaven, we have our theme song for this week, which is only one way. And this is one of my favorite songs that we have. And this song is all about that one way to get to heaven, which is through Jesus. So we're going to look at the words of this song and talk a little bit about what it means. So you can go ahead and hold this, Marissa. It says, only one way to get to heaven. Jesus is the only way. Now, boys and girls, if you don't know who Jesus is, he is God's perfect son. He came down to earth as a little baby, and he grew up here. And when he was about 33 years old, some mean men took him and nailed him to a cross where he bled and died for our sins. And now this song sings all about that. It talks about how Jesus is that one way we can have our sins, those bad things, forgiven. So the song says, only one way to get to heaven, Jesus is the only way. One, one way to live with God forever, Jesus is the only way. So God is Jesus' Father and he lives in heaven. So that's what this song is talking about. No other way, no other way, no other way to go. Only one way to get to heaven, Jesus is the only way. And it repeats this so many times because it's important to remember that. Because boys and girls, sometimes we think that Maybe we can do enough good things and that'll get us to heaven. Or maybe because our parents go to church, we'll be able to go to heaven. But you know what? The Bible tells us that that's not true and that the only one way to get to heaven is through Jesus. And we'll look at that again later in our memory verse and our Bible lesson. So if you've never believed in Jesus, it's important to remember that if we put our faith and trust in him, that's how we can be saved. That's how we can have that separation from God taken away. And later today, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And boys and girls, if you have believed in Jesus as your Savior, we can thank God for that because Jesus is the only way we can have our sins forgiven. And if he didn't come and die for us, we still would be living a sin filled with life and or a life filled with sin and separation from God. So boys and girls, if you believe in Jesus, go ahead and take some time and pray and thank him. But until then, we're gonna sing this song, and we'll sing this song every single day to help us remember that Jesus is the only way. And there's some motions that go along with this song. And so it's only one way to get to heaven. Jesus is the only way. And the song pretty much repeats the same thing until you get to the break it down section. And for that break it down section, we're going to be doing some fun dance moves, you know, freestyle, whatever you want to do. So we're going to go ahead and start singing that. We're going to have somebody come up and help with the motions as well.
<laughs> so we just sung our one-way song, and you guys remember the word up? The word up is God's way is the only way. Now, I'm sure most of you have friends. How many of you guys have friends? Well, that's right, you all have friends, right? And there's many ways to make friends. You might make friends at school. You might make friends on the playground. Even when you just go play in a new city, you can sometimes make friends. But there's only one way that we can have a friendship with God. And that is through Jesus. We just sung about that. Jesus died on the cross that we can have our sins forgiven. And when our sins are forgiven, then we can come boldly before the throne of God. That's what it says in the book of Hebrews. So we can have... A friendship with God. And if we have friends, um, we often communicate with them, right? So what are some ways that we can communicate with our friends? Yes, that's right, Johnny. We could communicate with our phones, right? Some of you guys, even though you're young, you have your own cell phone. Some of you guys are probably also good at texting. Someone earlier in the club said, one of the clubs we did said that we could message with people. How many of you guys message with Facebook Messenger. That's right, good. And so <clears throat> there's a lot of ways we can talk, talk to our friends. And God wants us to talk to Him if we're His friends. So if you know Jesus as your Savior, then we can talk to God. And the way that we talk to God is through prayer. Now, <clears throat> sometimes when we pray here at camp, we tell you to bow your head and close your eyes. But you know what? You can pray in many different ways. You can pray by doing like we do here at camp where we close our eyes and bow our heads and, and talk out loud. Or maybe you even just think things in your head about God. Or maybe you like to sing songs. So there are all ways that we can talk to God and pray. So right now I'm just going to pray real quick and then we'll see what's next. Dear God, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you that we can come here to camp today. And we just pray that you continue to be with us as we learn more here. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so just like Mr. Brett was telling us how there's many ways that we can get in contact with each other, one of those is by visiting in person. Um, now, due to COVID-19, we haven't been able to visit in person very much. But if I did want you to come to my house, you would have to have directions to get there. If you had never been there before, you might call me up and ask for directions, and I'd give them to you. But you know what? If one kid asked me how to get to my house and I gave them directions, but they live over in Afton, it'd be completely different than if somebody in Bainbridge asked for directions. They'd be completely different directions because they're coming from different places. And now, just like you guys need directions to get to my house, we need directions to get to God's house, which is heaven. And our memory verse for today talks about that. And it's from John 14, verse 6. It says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. So this is our memory verse. We will have a new verse every day that we'll be looking at and trying to remember the important truths that the Bible teaches us. And this verse right here is found in the book of John, in John chapter 14. And we're going to read this exactly from the Bible, so that way you guys can see that it is true. So in the Bible, there's two halves. There's the Old Testament and the New Testament. And John is in the New Testament half of the Bible. So when we find the book of John, we're going to want to go to chapter 14, because that's where this verse is found. And then we're going to find verse 6. I'm going to read this to you guys, and I want you guys to see if it says the same thing that's on this card, so you know that I'm not making this up. It says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now that verse says the same thing that's on this card. We took it right from God's one true word, so we know that it's 100% true. Now, if we're going to make this verse important and try to remember it, we probably should know what it's talking about, because some of these words are a little confusing. So in the very beginning of this verse, it says, Jesus said to him. Now here, Jesus is talking to his friend Thomas, and he told him, I am the way and the truth and the life. So when it says, I am the way, the I is saying Jesus. Jesus is saying, I am the way. And so what that talks about is how Jesus is the one way to get to heaven. Without him, we would be separated from God because of our sin. And then it says he is the truth. And that's talking about how he brings the one true way that we can go to heaven. Like I talked about earlier, sometimes we think that there's other ways to get to heaven. But the Bible teaches us that there's only one true way to get to heaven. And that is through Jesus being the way. And lastly, it says, and the life. And what that talks about is how Jesus gives us eternal life. That life starts now when we begin a relationship with him and goes on forever in heaven. 
And then it says, no one comes to the Father. Now, who is God's Father? Marissa, do you know who God's Father is? It's God. That's right, Jesus' Father is God because they are one in the same. You are correct. It says that no one comes to the Father except through me. So that's saying that nobody can get to God in heaven except through Jesus. And so we're going to read this together a few times to help us remember it. But I also have a fun game we're going to play. So when I say a color, and if you're wearing that color at home, I want you guys to stand up and read it with us. And if you're not wearing the color, you can still read it, but you don't have to stand up, okay? So I think I'm going to pick yellow first, because a lot of us here are wearing yellow. So if you're wearing yellow, you have to stand up and read the verse. The reference first and last, okay? John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. All right, those of you who are wearing yellow can sit down. Marissa, what color should we do next? What's your favorite um, color? I like the color blue. Oh, okay, so if you're wearing blue, go ahead and stand up with us, all right? John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. All right, you know what? I like every single color. So if you're wearing any colors, any at all, even if it's black or gray or brown, go ahead and stand up. So that means all of you, because all of you have some kind of color on you. So let's read this together. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Now, boys and girls, this verse is really important to remember because it tells us a very important message. If we've never believed in Jesus, this tells us the one way that we can go to heaven, and that is through him. And if you have believed in Jesus, again, this verse tells us the one way to get there. And if we don't tell other people about that, they may never know. So if you have believed in Jesus, it's important that you tell other people how to get to heaven, and that is through Jesus as the one and true Savior. So just as Marissa, Madeline was saying, we also have a verse that um, helps us memorize this. In John 14, 6, which is just cupping your mouth, and Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And now we're going to sing a song and everyone stand up. And now we're going to sing it. Have any of you had a problem that you didn't know how to solve? 
I know I've had a problem that I didn't know how to solve. Who would you, who would you ask to help you solve that problem? I would probably ask someone like my mom or teacher or someone I trusted a lot. But today in our Bible lesson, we're going to learn about a man who had a problem he didn't know how to solve. And no one else could help him solve this either. Now this man's name was Naaman. Now Naaman, he was a captain of the Syrian army. And he was a wealthy man and the king liked him very, very much. But he had this big problem called leprosy. Now leprosy, it would cause like, cause like blisters and boils all over his skin and it was really painful. And there was nothing back in that day to heal him from this problem. And so he could die from this leprosy. But boys and girls, you and I, we also have a problem called sin. Now earlier I said sin is anything we think, say, or do that doesn't please God. And this sin, it separates us from God because God is holy and has never done anything wrong. But we have done wrong things. It says here in the Bible, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. So that means that we have gone astray in the sense that we don't do what God wants us to do. We don't do those good things. We do these bad things and we were born knowing how to sin. No one had to teach us how to sin. We've known from a young age how to lie, how to steal. And so this sin, it separates us from God, and it makes it so we can't be with him. And this sin, it is a big problem. Just like Naaman's big problem was leprosy. He couldn't be healed of his leprosy. And so Naaman, even though he had leprosy, he still continued to be the captain of the Syrian army. And they were going to war against a place called Israel. Now Israel, on our map here, Syria is up here. And Israel is down here. Israel is where God's people live. But God, he let the Syrian army conquer Israel because the people of Israel, they had started going against God. And so one, so when they conquered Israel, they took a whole bunch of people as slaves back to Syria. And one of those people they took was a young girl. And this girl, the Bible doesn't tell us her name or anything, but she was probably really, really scared. If I was taken away from my home, I would be really, really scared too and not know what to do. But she was put in Naaman's house and because of Naaman's house, because remember, Naaman was a wealthy man. And so she was working for Naaman's house and maybe she did things like maybe she swept the floor or washed the windows or things like that. And so this servant girl, she had noticed something different about Naaman's household. It was a little bit like sad there. People weren't as happy. And she maybe heard from down the line that Naaman had this terrible disease. Now, this girl, she remembered a prophet she had heard of. Now, a prophet is someone who delivers God's message to the people. She had to remember that there's a prophet named Elisha in Israel that could probably heal Naaman. But the question is, why would God want to heal Naaman? Naaman was a bad man. He worshiped idols, false gods that weren't real. But God, he wanted to help Naaman because God, he loves everyone. And that includes you. God, he loves you so, so much. He is the creator of everything. And it says here that God is love. He is love. He created everything. He knows how many hairs are on your head, what color your eyes are, what you ate for breakfast this morning. He knows all of this and he loves you and he is holy, which means he's perfect and he has never done anything wrong. And so God, he loves you so, so much that he sent Jesus down to earth to die for you. And so God, he also loved Naaman. Now this girl, she knew that she should go and tell someone about Elisha. So she went up to Naaman's wife and she told her all about Elisha and how if only my, my master Naaman could go and visit him and maybe he could be healed of all his illness. And so this girl, she, by doing that, she was being a witness. And if we have believed in Jesus as our Savior, we should be a witness to others. 
it says here in the Bible, in Acts um, 1, 8, B, it says, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. The Bible tells us we are supposed to be God's witness and tell others about Jesus. Now, we can be a witness by telling others about Jesus, but we can be also a witness of God's love by being kind to those we might not like or being kind to those who are mean to us. God, he wants us to show his love to other people too. Just like this girl, she was showing love to Naaman, the people who took her from her own country, because she knew that she should be a witness, just like we should be a witness too. Now, so after Naaman's wife had heard this, she rushed to tell Naaman, and she said, Naaman, Naaman, there's this man in Israel that could possibly heal you from your disease. So Naaman quickly went to the king of Syria and said, can I go to Israel? And the king was like, yes, quick, I'll write a letter and you can go and see the king of Israel. So they got all in their chariots to go to Israel and brought some gifts with them. So I want everyone to stand up. If you're sitting down and pretend we're riding our chariots to Israel, we're going to Israel to go and see the king. And we finally make it there and we go to see the king and we give him the letter. And it reads, I'll read it right out of the Bible. It says in 2 Kings 5, 6, it says, and he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you Naaman my servant, that you may cure him of his leprosy. And so, when the king heard this, he tore his robes. He was so upset because he thought that Syria was going to attack Israel, Israel again. And so when Elisha heard that the king had tore his robes, he sent a letter to the king too. And so Elisha sent this letter saying, if I can find it, it says, But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So the king sent Elisha in his chariots again with his servants to go and see Elisha. So I need everyone to stand up again. We gotta go ride to Elisha. We gotta go be healed. So here we are riding our chariots. And when we get there, who do you think would greet him at the door? Well, a servant came and greeted him at the door and said, you need to go dunk in the Jordan River seven times and only then you can be healed of your leprosy. Now, Naaman would probably be happy about this, right? He'd probably be overjoyed like, I can be healed. But he wasn't, because Naaman was a selfish man, and he had pride. He was a wealthy man, and he was like, how dare Elisha just send a servant out here to tell me this? To dunk in a dirty Jordan River? There are probably cleaner rivers in Samaria. And so, uh, this was Naaman's only way to be saved from his disease. Just like boys and girls, you and I have only one way that we can be saved from our sin problem. And that was through Jesus. Jesus, he came down as a little baby and grew up to about the age of 33. And then he died on the cross for our sins. It says here, And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So when Jesus was nailed to the cross, the blood came out of his hands, and only because of that, we could be saved from our sins. Now, Jesus was the only one who could do this, because I couldn't die for your sins. Jesus was the only one who could do this, because he was the perfect son of God. He had never done anything wrong. Now, the best part of the story is that Jesus, he didn't stay dead. He rose again three days later, and now he's in heaven, ruling as king. And this is the only one way we can be saved from our sins. Just like this was the only way Naaman could be saved from his leprosy by dunking in the Jordan River. But his pride was keeping him from doing that. But after talking with his servants, his servants finally convinced him to go dunk into the Jordan River. So he went and he was going to dunk in the Jordan River. So I want you guys to stand up if you're sitting down and we're all going to dunk in the Jordan River. Seven times. So ready? We go one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what do you think happened when he came out on the seventh time? He was healed of his leprosy. He no longer had that disease. And he was so, so excited about that. It says in the Bible, I'm going to read right out of it. It says, then he returned to the man of God and all his company, and he came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel, so accept now a present from your servant. So after being healed, he went back to Elisha, and he told Elisha that there is no other God than in Israel. Now Elisha was also offered gifts. But Elisha, he didn't take these gifts because he wanted all the glory to go to God because God was the one who did this. God was the one who performed the miracle and saved Naaman from his disease. And God, he is the only one that can save us from our sin problem. So if we have never believed in Jesus, you can do that. It says in Acts 16, 31, it says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Now we can believe in Jesus by trusting that we're a sinner and that he died on the cross for our sins and rose again and he will save us from our sins. So boys and girls, if you would like to believe in Jesus, you can pray to him and ask him to do that. You can pray to him and I want you guys to bow your head and close your eyes. You can pray to him and ask him, dear Jesus, please, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, so please forgive me. Amen. And Jesus, he will do that, but it's not the prayer that saves you. It's believing with your whole self that you are a sinner and that Jesus died for you. So now I'm going to pray and end this Bible lesson today. So dear God, thank you for today, and I thank you for being able to teach this Bible lesson, and I pray that they can... Just learn more about you all throughout this week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls. So Miss Marissa just finished telling us a lovely story about Jesus. And she was telling other people about Jesus. And that is what's called being a missionary. And we have a song right here that's about being a missionary. The, story start, or the song starts off with this, which is telling a story of Jesus. It says, stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. And the Lord is another name for Jesus. And this, the, in the next verse, it tells us exactly what Jesus did for us. It says, he forgave my sins and he saved my soul. He cleansed my heart and he made me whole. And so what this is talking about is when Jesus forgives us of our sins, we are made whole again. Instead of being stuck in that brokenness of sin. And so boys and girls, if you've never believed in Jesus, this part of the song is talking to you. It's telling you how Jesus can make you whole again. And then the next part of the song is about being a missionary, which is telling somebody else about Jesus. And it says, go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. And now Calvary is where Jesus died. It says, he'll forgive their sins and he'll save their souls. He'll cleanse their hearts and he'll make them whole. So this is talking about what we can tell other people so they can believe in Jesus as well. So boys and girls, if you have believed in Jesus, we can be missionaries and tell other people about Jesus. We don't have to go far away. We can do it in our own homes. We can tell our brothers and sisters or even some of our friends. And this song is one of my favorites. And we have some motions that go along with it. So Miss Rita here is going to teach us all of those motions so that we can have a good time together. So it's stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. He'll forgive their sins and he'll save their souls. He'll cleanse their hearts and he'll make them whole. And then that repeats a couple times and then it's Go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. He'll forgive their sins, he'll save their souls, cleanse their hearts, and he'll make them whole. Alright, so everybody go ahead and stand up and we'll sing this together.
Okay, we're also going to be learning about a missionary, and her name is Amy Carmichael. And Amy Carmichael was born in 1867, a week before Christmas, and she lived in Ireland. And she had always heard about Jesus because her parents were going to church. And she also learned that God always answers prayer. And one thing she really loved was the colors and the sound of the ocean. She also really loved the color blue, and her mom's eyes were blue. But Amy, her eyes were brown, and they sparkled with mischief, but they caught almost everything. They were still brown, though. And so one night, when she was almost three years old, Amy prayed that, that God would give her blue eyes. And as she went to bed, she knew God would answer her prayer. Do you think she'd wake up with blue eyes? Well, the next morning, she climbed to the dresser, and her eyes were still brown. Why hadn't God answered her prayer? Well, God, He always answers prayer, and it might not always be the way you want it to. And she had also learned a valuable lesson from this. And as she grew up, she decided and became a missionary to India. And when she came to India, she was so excited to learn the language, but the people there were scared of her because she was a foreigner or somebody who was not born in India. So she couldn't go to some of the places that other Indians were allowed to go to. And she wanted to learn more about what they worshipped and who they worshipped. And that they had temples, which are places where they worship their false gods or idols. And so Amy found a way that she could go into these temples and stuff. And that was by staining her skin with coffee and wearing a long Indian sari, which is just a really long star scarf that you wrap round and round over one shoulder. And it can also be put over your head. And she went to show her missionary friends about her, her disguise. And they said that if she... That if she had had blue or green eyes, her disguise would not have worked. Because the Indian women there have mainly brown eyes. So one day when Amy was going to the temple to see how they worshipped, um, she was really sad because it was dimly lit. And they, she was sad because of how many people were worshipping the false gods. And she wanted to learn more about them and also teach them about the one true God. And she knew that God is the only one who could save them. And one day when she was going to the temple, she saw this parade of people. And in one of the carts, there was 10 young children, anywhere from 4 to 12, year old, 12 years of age. And they were all girls. And But when Amy looked at her face, their faces, she realized they were full of terror. And she, as, the, as the gates closed, she noticed that they were prisoners. And this made Amy really sad because they were forced to serve the idols and they were given up by their family. And those closed temple gates mocked Amy. And she wanted to learn more about the temple children and where they came from. Well, do you think Amy's going to find about, out more about the temple children? Well, you'll have to come back tomorrow to find out. So that was a story about a missionary from about a thousand years ago, over a thousand years ago. But you know what, boys and girls? We are also going to learn about a new modern day missionary. And this modern day missionary is named Jan Johnson. Now Jan Johnson works in the Asia Pacific, which is covering the areas of all of Asia. And there's 33 countries in Asia that she works with. She does a lot of training of other uh, missionaries to reach children in that area, and she also ministers to children herself. Now we're going to learn a little bit each day about Jan Johnson and her ministry, and we're also going to raise support. Now, as I said, working with 33 countries, she travels a lot, 
And so some of the money that we're going to raise is going to help in two areas. First, it's going to help her buy some new luggage and also it's going to help with expenses of airline tickets as she needs to fly from place to place. Now, boys and girls, as we go through this week, you can help raise funds for these airline tickets and for her new luggage. And I know it's going to be a little hard, a little different than when you come here to camp. Usually we have a fun offering that we take care of camp. But this year, you can still give. And if you look at our Good News um, Camp Facebook page, you'll see there where your moms or dads uh, can give uh, through that. And we'll um, have directions on how they can give to the Jan Johnson Project. And so you guys can look at that with your parents on Facebook. And um, if you have questions, you can also have your parents message us and we can answer some other questions. So... <clears throat> When, when you're raising money, we would be happy if your parents want to send money, they can too. But this is something that you can do yourself to support missions. And so you can think of ways to raise money. It might be taking um, bottles and cans that your mom or dad has into the Redemption Center to get money. Or maybe it might be helping a neighbor out or maybe doing an extra job around the house. But you can give to missions yourself no matter what your age is. Now we learned a little about uh, what a missionary is. Um, and can you guys remember what that is? That's right. So it's telling others about Jesus, about the good news that Jesus died for their sins and rose again. And you can be a mission right here near your home. Or in the case of Jan Johnson, she's a missionary overseas. And so the other really important thing that you guys can do right there at home is you can pray for Jan Johnson. And we're going to just close this time real quick. By praying for Jan Johnson right now. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you that you love us so much. You sent your son to die for us. Not only for us here in this country, but also for boys and girls around the world. And we just pray now for Jan Johnson. That as she does her ministry travel around, that you would give her traveling uh, safety. That, that her airline uh, flights would be safe. And that her train travel and all the other means of travel she does uh, would be safe. And we just... Thank you for the love for us. We thank you that we can gather, even though we can't be in person right now, that we can still learn about missions and missionaries and your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty, folks. So we just heard about Jan Johnson and how she tells people about the only way to Jesus. And I feel like it's time we sing our theme song again. Right, Matt? I think so. We need I to get think this so. So I need everyone to stand up and we're going to party it up to our theme song. Cue the music.
at 3 o'clock. And that'll be from 3 to 4. So if you guys want to be a part of that Zoom, feel free to send us an email and we can send you the link so you can join that Zoom with us. We'll be playing some review games. If you have any questions from today, you can come ask them. And if you guys made the decision to believe in Jesus today, we'd love for you to come on and tell us about that. So you guys are all invited to join that Zoom with us later. Also, later today, you guys will be releasing some videos right here on our Facebook page for you guys to watch. And some of those will include activities, just like we would do here, but things that you can follow along with at home. And so, boys and girls, if you have any questions about that, feel free to have your parents send us a message or join the Zoom later, and I would love to be able to talk to you. But we're going to take this time now and close in prayer. So everybody clap up, bow your heads, and close your eyes. Dear God, I want to thank you so much for letting us come together today and have this time, even though we're online and not in person. I just thank you for who you are and what you do for us, and I just thank you so much for all these boys and girls that came out and enjoyed this lesson. And God, I ask that we can have a good day tomorrow together. In your name, amen. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow.